Now, the, the use of simulation, which is a part three of my presentation, is actually going to be telling you what we have done using simulation till now. Here, uh, so uh, I would like you to focus on the objective of the problem. Solution would come later. So we have been told that, okay, we are, uh, the clients of ours told us that we are making uh, a huge number of similar houses in Bilari, Karnataka. And we wanted to make sure that we come up with that design which would actually make sure that our, our transformer loading is the minimum. This was the uh, basic objective which was given. So we formulated a problem. And uh, so this was a kind of low cost housing. So what uh, the architect came up with this idea of you know having uh, this slab is ventilated. From this side it is open and from that side it is open with the tubes inside it, concrete tubes. So you can actually have uh, uh, air coming through here and going so it takes away the heat of the slab which you generally have in the warmer season. So how to do that? How to actually quantify this entire thing and tell them okay by having these many slabs you would have this kind of comfort. By having this kind of slab you have, would have this kind of comfort. So this quantification was required. So uh, obviously it, this problem can be scaled uh, down and it can be done in an Excel calculator also to a certain accuracy. But what we did is we used our computational fluid dynamics model for this entire thing. And uh, here you see that these are various channels and there's a different height here. So the uh, height difference is actually inculcating a airflow from the lower side to the upper side because of the stack effect of air. When the air is warmer, it goes up. And it creates, in the process, it creates a lower pressure here. So the air from this side comes in the slab and it cools, keeps on cooling. So it's a passive strategy of uh, uh, cooling the slab without any power, without any forced uh, ventilation. So doing this thing actually has given us an idea of what kind of cooling, passive cooling, you are imparting in the building. Uh, with this particular arrangement at a given outside temperature or given outside environment. So this is the problem and this was the solution. So they have uh, this simulated numbers. Say again? Are those numbers simulated numbers? Or? Yes, yes, yes. They are they, they actually they, these numbers are actually telling you the air changes per hour within the space. So uh, it means that uh, you are aware of air changes per hour, right? ACH. Air changes means that this entire room's air goes out and the new air comes in, uh, if I say 1 ACH in 1 hour. So when I say uh, 7 ACH, it means 7 times in an hour the complete air has been changed. So that complete air has a certain specific heat and those specific heat is taking away a certain amount of cooling or heat from the slab. So those things are uh, uh, proportional to the ACH. That's why we reported ACH there. So based on that, they decided, okay, we have we require this kind of slab ventilation density to make sure that our system works. Then uh, this is again just a summary. Yeah. What is the plan area and what is the dimensions of these slabs and what is the percentage of that that we have proposed? Uh, you want me to tell you the density of yeah. this thing? Yeah. It was around uh, two feet away. Every channel was two feet away in the slab. This is what I remember right now. But I can come back with you the entire, this entire design, detailed design later on possibly. But uh, the idea was to make sure that uh, you, uh, uh, we have been given the challenge that we need to have a passive airflow induced. This is what, this is what our objective was. But one more aspect I'm looking at, let's say the slab is flat. Mm -hmm. Now by incorporating these vents mm -hmm. below that, will it affect the... No, no, it's not below, it's inside, sandwiched vent. Sand. It's sandwiched between the slabs. Okay. A slab, this thick slab, and you have one vent, two vents, three vents, four vents, this is a slab. So it's actually saving on concrete also. They're not actually pouring concrete where they require this. Okay. 
and they what they did is they have this very specific contract contractual obligation that there has to be no condensation at all. It would it, it would actually impact their aesthetics. So they need to understand in what seasons I would have con uh, condensation. Uh, if it is too much, then possibly I need to come up with a warm air diffuser uh, near the windows to make sure that we don't have any condensation. So that decision can be taken by that. Now this is slightly uh, central heat pump system. Should I actually explain these things, or this is getting too much? Is getting too much? Maybe one or two test cases. Maybe you can elaborate, and the rest of them you can just uh, okay. uh, give a glimpse of that. that okay, so just tell me which one. Like this is a central heat pump system. This is a data center free cooling. Uh, this is uh, uh, reporting of energy efficiency, net zero energy building, building waste heat recovery. This is Gujarat infrastructure financial uh, city thermal storage, phase change material, tri generation, which actually does a lot of tri generation things. Uh, I mean, I'll explain that. This is a data center air management, which is quite near to your ear. This Cadence, there's a company Cadence here. So their data center is there. And then district energy systems, tunnel heat sink, central heat pump again, and then ESCO grade modeling, and then heat load, cooling tower performance, heat load for Najafgarh station and all of that. Tell me which one you want. <laughs> At least <laughs> anything with some maths in it. Huh? Anything with some maths in it. <laughs> I think everything has maths. <laughs> Everything has math in this. So it's all uh, clubbing of various differential equations, using them uh, in an abstract way, and coming to the solution. A related could solution. Just illustrate that in any one of them. Okay. Like what is the, you know. Okay, so I think, uh, I let me just limit myself to, uh, let me just go in this way. Now, now this give city, uh, the, uh, what is happening? You know, this, uh, to the store, uh, store the uh, cool, and sometimes uh, you have a chiller inside. The, uh, I think the, in, there's a utility room here, and you have uh, chillers there. They actually supply chilled water. And that chilled water is coming here, and it, it, uh, I think this is a different system here, but uh, the chilled water actually cools the space through uh, 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 circulating air from the choir. Now imagine this, that the night tariff of the uh, uh, utility from where you are getting the electricity is lower than the day. So you want to, and you have to use your building in the day itself. What would you do? So you tend to store the chilled water. And storing the chilled water would make sure that uh, uh, that chilled water in the night time, it is stored, cooled to a certain level. And in the daytime, chillers are off and you're using it. So this is a heat storage. It's a cold uh, it's a cold storage kind of thing. The size of this thing is 20 meter in diameter and 10 meter high. You can imagine what how much amount of water is going to be there in that. And you also know that there is a thermocline. And when I say thermocline, it means that in the same chilled water tank, you would have the colder water on the bottom and you would have the hot water on the top. So when you charge it, it entirely swaps to this level and when it is charged, it comes, comes like this, the thermocline comes like this. <laughs> so in the, in the gift city, there was a contract from a Korean company and they have proposed a design. They said that my thermal storage would be charged in 4.8 hours or something like that and you can use it uh, throughout the day. Okay. So generally uh, these uh, thermal storage are the unit of storage is ton hours. So 8 ton hours means 1 ton to 8 hours. So if this was 4000 ton hours. So this is the kind of capacity we are talking about here. So uh, these guys, uh, now the gift people, they required a third party vetting because this knowledge is not there with everyone. 
And the people who are procuring these things, they don't know what the Korean guys are coming in and selling it to you. Later on, it doesn't work. They can't catch. So, uh, although commissionings are done, so they require a third party verification of this thing that this system, as we expect it to work, would work. <coughs> what is the best way of doing it? The best way would be to simulate it and to understand and to put the required load and to understand whether it's going to be working the way they want it to work. So you can see that uh, this, this is actually showing the charging curve, this is showing the discharging curve. So this is a uh, transient uh, CFD simulation as water is flowing. Wherein what you do is you supply the chilled water from here, maintaining the thermocline and you supply the chilled water in a in so laminar way that it doesn't disturb the thermocline layer. So basically you are filling and discharging, right? You are filling it and you are discharging it, simply. And you are making sure that uh, the water supply, which is here is somewhere around 236 or 237 liters per second, if you exceed that water supply, the thermocline, the disturbance in this entire thing would be too much and it will become a mixed tank, which you don't require. So the, the, the real thing that these, uh, Kore, uh, I think Korean or whatever, these guys were given was this plate. So they have this patented plate, which actually makes sure that you supply the water in a laminar. So this is how the simulations are actually putting you at the forefront in the real life. So uh, just a quick, uh, thought for abstraction, this is a capacitor, hmm. capacitor that you study in electronics and the potential is the temperature, current is the flow. So this is how you think, okay, so this is, anyway, so we are up as far as the time is concerned but what I would do is I would just add one more slide because this is again, I think that I should actually consider that also, this one. This would give you a better idea of how simulations are used in the metros that you travel every day. So, uh, you know, when the metro, you, you, you have been to this underground station. When the train comes, there is a breeze of air comes in. When it goes, the air goes from there. Now, this is very, very highly transient. You have earth and the earth has, uh, you know, convection happening within the tunnel. The train has a lot of heat sources. It has the heat source on its rooftop, the AC. It has the braking. When it breaks, it has the heat, uh, heat generation. And then you have uh, the stations which are cooled by air, air conditioning system. So imagine running this thing, imagine running this thing for 25 years. So do you think that the temperature which keeps on oscillating, coming up and down, coming up and down, all this kind of thing, it will keep on increasing or it will keep on decreasing. What is happening is that you have these two tunnels, 5.3 dia tunnels, which is, there is there in, in the DMRC you have 5.3 diameter tunnels and you have a lot of soil here, a different kind of soil. I mean at each location you have a different, some, some in places it's a stone, so with different heat capacities. Imagine that uh, this thing is not air conditioned. This thing is not air conditioned means that you have a platform screen doors on the underground station. So cold air is not going into the tunnel. And you keep on running your trains for 25 years with the schedule that you expect it to be uh, at a headway of 2.5 minutes. When I say headway of 2.5 minutes, it means that uh, every 2.5 minutes there would be a train at the station. So. What is what exactly this train is doing is it's actually coming in and rejecting some heat and going out. Coming in, rejecting some heat, going out every 2.5 minutes from morning 6 to evening 12. What is going to be the condition for this tunnel wall or tunnel at the end of the night if you don't ventilate it? Thermal expansion. The things would be that's a secondary aspect. What would it, if you heat it too much? the entire tunnel structure is going to break. Yeah, will expand. Okay. This is one of, one of the aspect. And now, the, sorry, second aspect. The first aspect is you cannot run your train 
in tunnels which are more than 50 degrees centigrade because then the air conditioning system that it has on the rooftop all the compressors are going to be unloaded there won't be any cooling so it's a serious issue it can actually uh, make your train run or not run so how to make sure that this doesn't happen without actually building it so what you need to do is you need to do simulations again you have to do real world simulations to understand and predict whether these things are within the range or not in the range now quickly giving you this idea so what we did is we did 25 years simulations for understanding and we know that the phenomena let me just list down the phenomena very quickly convection happening here okay convection and there is a force convection also when the train comes velocity increases so uh, there is a term called as Nusselt number which keeps on updating as soon as you have larger airflow Nusselt number would make sure that the heat conduction through the surface of the tunnel is more so you regulate that you know the frequency of the train you know how much heat it is actually pouring in and you know that up to 30 meter of this radius of the earth would be impacted based on the annual temperature changes this is what you do after doing a sensitivity of uh, this particular thing so what you do is you do simulation and then you apply various strategies strategies like night venting so here you have a real use of simulation to understand how the systems are behaving and mind it this is highly transient is that the phenomena of heat transfer here is very very transient coming up and going within 2.5 minutes so yeah. this temperature and average temperature throughout year right but throughout year this is the change. peak temperature of a peak year of a year it so comes in so what we are interested in the peak temperature so if we limit it to 50 degrees centigrade we are done so that's what i was actually trying to tell you about and any questions on this particular thing i think i most welcome. Otherwise, you can write it down somewhere and send it to him, and he'll send it to me, and I'll try to answer it. Thank you. Thank you.